Hello, under the Koala family. Uh, my name is Achabara Sekwala, as you know. Uh, my parents recently celebrated their anniversary and we need to find out the do's and don'ts when it comes to marriage. Of course, there's a lot of things that people think you should do, but there is no actual blueprint according to what they've told us, but they're going to give you more information on that. Peace. Here we go. <laughs> so let's start with one. One of the things that you shouldn't do, a don't, is you shouldn't try and change each other. Okay. Right. You, when you got together, part of what attracted you to this person is what you found, what you met when you actually started seeing each other, mm. and that's what you should want to retain. And and I have to agree with that because honestly, if he had tried to change me, you know, we wouldn't have lasted a year. So the testament is the fact that you know he empowered me to be myself and to continue to be who I am and to live my truth and as a result you know we've been together now this is our 34th year and um, so yeah I can tell you that that's very wise advice <laughs> on my part anyway one of the first things I put was don't go to bed angry with each other now it's it's an interesting thing because sometimes you can have disagreements and it can be quite heated where you think Ugh, i'm so sick of this person and um but if you don't resolve it before you go to bed and then you want that little cuddle you know that bit of intimacy how are you going to reach out if you're angry he's a cuddler by the way <laughs> so i also put don't don't take each other for granted um, it's interesting because there are times where we can honestly assume that because you're ma you know, I'm married to this person, I can do whatever I like, um, go and come as I please, and it, he, he won't have a problem with it. So let me talk from my perspective, okay? I've never ever done that. So um, I think it's important that you don't take each other for granted. I think it's important that you really... Um, ensure that you acknowledge the, the, the difference between you and that person and obviously okay so I'm really interrupted because you can see we're, we're doing this and he didn't even think about putting his phone on fl flight mode don't do that <laughs> another thing I would like to say is really don't mind who you take advice from that too often we take advice from people who have not actually been through those years of marriage. Uh, you'll sometimes find married women taking advice from single women. It's the same thing we'd say in when it comes to raising children. You don't take advice from people who haven't had children. <laughs> uh, and um, that's very important. In fact, sometimes we go to the extent of even going to take advice from people who have been in marriage a long time because they know what they have invested in that relationship. And even when things have been choppy, what they would then do is they would then go and really evaluate and help you evaluate if you are really in making a mistake or if you have a genuine uh, challenge and how best to negotiate that challenge. One of my biggest ones, okay, and it's because we've experienced it so many times. Um, you're a couple, you've been together for years, and then the one partner, especially in this case, the husband, um, you know, maybe loses his job, or business is not going well, and he's not able to bring in the bacon, as they call it. And suddenly, you, as a woman, because you are providing friends and family and even you yourself start saying, why am I in this marriage? Um, he's not even looking after me. But you've always got to evaluate when business was good or when he was working, did he deny you anything? Did he take care of you? And for how many years have you earned an income but still received an, an allowance from from your partner or your husband and yet the when you go through a dip maybe six months a year it could even be two years 
it doesn't matter. In the 32 years, we've experienced situations where I've earned more than my husband, he, he's earned more than me, I've been working, he's not um, been working, but you know what? It has never affected our relationship. So when the one party is unable, step in and just do what you have to do to keep your marriage together, to build, to continue to build that amazing relationship you always had. Because if one party not working is going to bring dents in your marriage, it means that the marriage was never solid anyway, because it shouldn't be about who's earning and who isn't. And regardless of what others may say, remember that we live in the 21st century and the reality is that there are times we may face some unemployment. There may be times where there's not enough coming in, but we still have to not lose sight of who we are and why we're together. Another don't from my side is don't um, disrespect each other. And if I were to put it the way, another way around, I would say from a biblical perspective, it says submit to one another. That's Did you hear important. that, guys? Submit to one another. Okay, not just one person submitting to the other. <laughs> so, my one last don't, okay, is don't withhold sex from each other. In other words, don't use sex as a weapon for punishment or anything like that. Just be honest and truthful. If you don't feel in the mood for sex, that's okay. But don't deny your partner because you're, you're angry with him or you've got a beef with him and you just think, ha, 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 tonight I'm going to make you suffer. Doesn't work. In the end, anyway, if you withhold sex from your, your husband, you're withholding it from yourself too, right? Yeah. And, and there's a danger of <laughs> opening up the door for others <laughs> so don't do that <laughs> okay so he's speaking from a man's perspective that <laughs> you know if, if you deny him sex he might go and find it somewhere else <laughs> so let's move on to the the do's we, we decided to start with the don'ts um because sometimes you know um it, it it just gets it out of the way okay one of the things i've said is that communicate 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 be truthful, be honest, be transparent. Never ever have a situation where somebody is coming to tell you about your husband or your, somebody's going to tell your husband about you. I'm an open book, guys. There is nothing under this earth that anybody can say to my husband that he doesn't already know. And I'm talking past, past relationships, um, naughty things I've done in the past, anything, and vice versa. I've probably been more naughty than him, but hey. Make time for each other. Mm. And sometimes it's not having to go out necessarily, but just sometimes getting together, sitting together, talking in the evenings, cuddling. Sometimes you may not even say anything. You don't have to always talk. Sometimes you can just hold and cuddle or watch a movie together. I told you yes. he's a cuddler. <laughs> yeah. And following on with that, I think be each other's best friend. Look, we are now in that phase of life where the children are out of the house. And if we were not each other's best friend, we I would be climbing the walls because I'm one of these very vibrant, outgoing types of people. And if we were not each other's best friends, I think I'd be going crazy right now. But because we've never lost sight of that, we've always, always been best friends. It has not changed. And because of that, you know, the empty nest is not so empty. It's not so overwhelming. Plan together, mm. including the finances. Because sometimes finances are what break a marriage up. Yes. Plan your finances together. Let each know what is coming in. Even go to the extent of having shared accounts. So, you, so that the one will know when money is going out. You don't hide it. Okay. Mm. 
because that causes problems. Yeah. And in planning together, you create a shared vision right. um, for the for yourselves, for the family, and for the generations to come. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just to add on that, you know, um, I remember his fiftieth birthday. I was organizing a surprise party for him, and I took money out to pay the deposit for the venue. And I kept thinking, oh my goodness, he's going to see that this chunk of money's gone out. And he's probably going to ask what really he's used this money for. And it was the first time I was actually regretting the fact that we had, you know, access to each other's accounts. Because <laughs> if I hadn't, if we didn't, I wouldn't have had to worry. But bless his heart, he never noticed, thank God. So we talked about don't deny sex, okay? But we, we, we also believe that you have to have a very healthy sex life. Look, we're not rabbits. We're not at it hammer and tongue every day, every second. But when we do have sex, it is awesome. And for me to be saying that after 30 odd years of sleeping with the same man, and I can still tell you that the sex is good. He's generous. He is so selfless that makes for a healthy sex life. Encourage and support each other yeah. in all the endeavors. Um, sometimes within relationships, we have a funny thing between, it's like a competition between men and women that shouldn't be there. And sometimes you have situations where when the woman wants to study further, the man maybe sometimes feels threatened. Don't do that. Encourage your wife, support her, and do everything that you can for her to grow because when she's fulfilled, fulfilled uh, it makes a big difference in your life. <laughs> <As a man. laughs> okay, so my last, um, my last one is laugh together as often as you can. Laugh each day with each other because one, it, it actually makes you feel younger, it rejuvenates you, and it's part of the bonding. So he tells the most ridiculous jokes. You know that, that thing of don't give up your day job? That's him. I've also got this habit of sometimes even laughing more at my own jokes because the kids even tell me. But we laugh together and we laugh. There is not a day that goes by that we don't laugh. Even when I'm not in the mood, he will make me laugh. So, yeah. I suppose my last bit of input is that element that says um, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Mm. Okay. So, sometimes you can be irritated <laughs> because ultimately, first and foremost, you are even more than being accountable to her, you are accountable to God. So even when she might be irritating you, you're annoyed. God says you have to forgive and forgive 70 times, 70 times, 70. When you are accountable to him, you actually end up having a discussion with him and saying, but God, this is what she is doing now. And he's going to say, what did the Bible say? <laughs> love your wife. But God, love your wife. And so ultimately, it boils down to that. So even the element of forgiveness boils down to that. Even what you do and how you respond and how you respond to being annoyed with her boils down to that. Uh, even when things don't make sense, it boils down to that. So ultimately, you ask yourself as a man, am I being obedient and loving my wife as God instructed? Then you say to God, because first of all, you're accountable to God. <laughs> And if, it, if it's not working, and if you know, and he knows that you are not being obedient, then you go back to the drawing board. So, that's my last. So guys, I know this is a tad long, but um, you know, it's, it's very difficult to try and cram into, you know, a few minutes, 32 or 34 years of, you know, just knowing each other and being with each other. But we hope that that's um, helped, you know, it's going to help a little bit. So have an awesome day. Thanks. Thank you.